All right, welcome back to the 90s tech. Uh, this is a moment that I've been waiting for for a while. Um, a couple of, uh, about a month ago, actually, I ordered one of those um, Monotech Turbo New XT. Actually, I don't think it's called Turbo, but it's just called New XT. And uh, it is a really cool uh, NEC V20 based open source project. And it uh, has, uh, it's basically a new. Uh, XT. <laughs> it's what it says on the tin. So uh, what I have here, unfortunately, uh, I, by the way, I loaned my camera, my normal camera to a friend uh, a few days ago. And so I'm using my Osmo Pocket, which doesn't quite have as good a light. And uh, unfortunately, I can't get my lav mic to work with it. So I'm just using the built-in microphone. So uh, please forgive me, but uh, hopefully this will uh, turn out okay. Uh, I also tweaked the focus settings. So hopefully there won't be too much focus hunting uh, going on with this little camera. I mean, it's basically an over-glorified cell phone camera on a gimbal um, but uh, anyway so what we, what do we have we've got a uh, rad lib from Texelec I'm not exactly sure how much this is gonna get used but it's an 8-bit ISA device and uh, I'm sure I'll be able to find some uses for it and then right here this is a uh, multi IO card it's got a parallel port game port a couple of serial ports now the um, monotech uh, uh, New XT here does have a serial port on board, but I would like to have two serial ports. So uh, uh, that's what this guy's for. So um, I need to make sure to configure this thing correctly so that it, I disable either I use both serial ports that are on here or I use one of the serial ports on here and one of the serial ports on there. We'll, we'll figure it out. So, uh, And then down here, we've got a couple of floppy drives. This is a not exactly period for an XT at all, but uh, this right here is a... 1.44 meg uh, floppy drive, which is black, and that should go in this little bay right here. And then this is, I believe, a 1.2 meg floppy drive, and I really like this one because it's got a little floppy icon on it, which is super cool. So, of course, right here, this is the Inwin BX, no, BK series um, case. It is a really tiny micro, micro ATX case with an included SFX power supply, which should work great with the new XT. So. Let's do an unboxing and see what comes in the box. I literally have not opened this. Uh, uh, this got delivered to work, and I had to re I had to um, resist opening it. So let's get this open and uh, let's get this uh, get this unboxing done. Okay, so let's get this baby unboxed. Like I said, I have not opened this. This is completely sealed, delivered from New Zealand, where. DJ delivered it from, JD, excuse me. And I could open this from the bottom, but I have a feeling this is packaged this way since this is where the... Na, 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 na. All right, so over on the Vogons forums, this apparently has a backplate installed in it now. So again, this is, I'm seeing this for the first time, and I think the back plate comes pre-installed, which is really nice. And before we get to this, I see a manual. Ah, oh, check that out. That's nice. I hope this is in focus. Okay, so we got a manual, user's manual, first edition, July 2019, Micro ATX Turbo XT motherboard. Look at that gorgeous printed manual. Talking about capability, 8088, any CV20 were compatible, must be at least 10 megahertz rated. There's a nice layout of the logic board. So our front panel connectors for hard drive, reset button, all that speaker. This has an onboard little buzzer Dip switches, including default settings, which is really nice in case you get this somewhere where you don't want it to be. Option ROM settings. Ah, cool. Talks about your upper memory map. Talks about where EGA, VGA memory is, that sort of thing. Super cool. All right, that's cool. So this is talking about how to prepare a compact flash card. Um, and how to configure it for DOS 622, which I'm going to be running, or DOS 3. And 
this talks about how the system ROM, some of this stuff goes over my head. I am an enthusiast, but I am not a programmer, so. Yeah, that's really cool. Really lovely, very well done. All right, not taped. Oh boy. <laughs> I think he had to uh, modify the uh, bag just a little bit there. If I can find my words. Check that out. <laughs> yep, and uh, this does come with 64 megs of storage. Looks like one of those really common Cisco compact flash cards. And this is stapled shut. Interesting. So we will carefully Pull these staples out and reveal this gorgeous, really, piece of art. That is very impressive. I'm speechless. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Love the giant Monotech logo there. All your switches and stuff. I, I guess he figures you'll uh, be looking at the back of this motherboard uh, if you're doing stuff with uh, with the BIOS and things like that. So that's very very nice. Let's build it, shall we? So here's our case. Let's go ahead and crack her open. Okay, so if I remember right, this needs to come off. This front bezel comes off, no problem. Oh, I remember now. I know there's something weird about this. The metal's got to come out first. We've got a little SFX power supply, power cord, bundle O wires, front panel connectors. Yeah, we are in good shape here, I think. Quick test fit. Oh yeah, well done. That's nice. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in. <laughs> Not bad. We got a different camera angle here. So all the screws are in, um, but uh, they are a little bit loose. So the logic board, motherboard will move around just a little bit and that's okay. We got some zip ties. Let's go ahead and just start cleaning this up. Let's see, I think we take this, roll it up. Oh, <laughs> okay, Never mind. These are all socketed. 
Uh, oh, right, yeah. I think this is not socketed. It looks like it is, but it is not. But with this off, we can do this a lot easier. So we'll take those USB 3 headers out, take this guy, curl them up like so. I was going to maybe put the little catch for the zip tie on the inside of the case, but I don't think it's really going to matter. So that's not great, but maybe I can mush this over here. Ah yeah, there we go. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. One of those moments where I wish I had three hands. There we go. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if that was that's a feature, like if they ever thought that that would be like a thing, but hey, removable audio and USB 2.0 head. Sandy pants. All right. Um, so before we start trying to add something like a floppy drive, so I do want to put at least the three and a half inch drive in here. And again, I know it's not period, but I'm lazy. So. <laughs> and uh, I think, unfortunately, for now, I think we're just going to be using the onboard little Hazo speaker there. Um, much like the LGR build, uh, I think this is going to need a nice little cone speaker um, that I plan on eventually putting in here, since this thing will do lots of little bleeps and bloops. Um, so I think having a higher quality uh, speaker is probably ideal. But uh, next up for now then is setting up the LEDs. There we go. Nice. I am not going to zip tie anything down until I know that those work. But I do want to add, zip, add some more zip ties. Keep this as neat and tidy as possible. And of course, I also plan on installing some additional cards. So off of this... Boy, I just realized this probably doesn't have enough power connectors on it. Uh, okay, so we really only need the ATX power connector, which does have a removable thingamabob. Ooh, nice. Comes way off. That's the 24 pin. I'm tempted to put a zip tie on that, but yeah, I'm going to put a zip tie on it right now. So now we have our convenient little 20 pin ATX power. We really don't need any of these other ones. Although I may end up tapping off of one of these other ones. Uh, to hook up the uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drive because I believe it uses a full size Molex, if I remember right. So we just need these two. Everything else for now is just going to tuck back here out of the way. And honestly, even this one here with the uh, three and a half inch floppy connector on it. Um, 
This one's gonna need to be back here, jammed into the floppy. I'm hoping I can put the floppy drive right here. But we'll see. All right. In goes the 20 pin ATX connector. There she goes. Not quite latched in. There we go. We are latched in. We'll definitely be adding some more zip ties to keep this tidy down here. All right, so um, we really have enough to power this on and test it since basically everything is on board. So let me get my video capture stuff set up. So we're not pointing at a uh, monitor and uh, once I get that going I can add that down in the corner of the screen and you'll see what I see. Got a little bit of a new setup today so uh, let's power this thing on and see what happens. Yeah so here we go. And we are booting into DOS. Ta-da! All right, so you may notice that there is only 640K of RAM. I need to install a special driver to see the upper memory and then use that. And then I can load most of DOS into upper memory. And I'll just have like something like 10K of uh, used memory, uh, conventional memory, uh, which is kind of an interesting feature of this device. So, but uh, yeah, it, works. So let's put some cards in and boot it up again, shall we? So this thing shuts off instantly. Yep, no problems there. So since the fan intake is right here, um, I don't want to put a card like right here, so let's use these two slots right here. And that's oh no. Okay. I think how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put the ad lib card. How's that? Okay. I know I'm blocking the camera. Sorry. Oh, the ad lib card's a little tall, but that's okay. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna put the ad lib card there. Gotcha. Okay, so for this, multi-IO car a controller here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna disable jumper. I'm gonna disable COM2 if that's possible. Is it possible? <laughs> uh, let's see here. So let's see here. CN1, serial connector 1. Specification, one printer port, one serial port, COM1, COM3. One optional serial port, COM2, COM4. Hmm. One game port. COM1 or 3, COM2 or 4 can be selected. COM1 or COM3 and COM2 or COM4 can be selected. Selectable printer interrupt signals, IRQ7, LPT1, uh, or IRQ2, or IRQ5, LPT2. All functions can be enabled or disabled, okay. So we're gonna assume right now that this is on, that the motherboard is on COM1. Abilities. Uh, dip switches, page eight. Uh, optional ROM, no, that's not what we want. Aha. Okay, serial port configuration jumper, default COM1. All right. So 
let's see if we can work with that. Uh, let's see here. Game port enable, disable, printer port select. For further programming technical information, please read the AT, XT and AT technical reference manual. <laughs> So we want to, this does not have a printer port, so that's fine. Do I just remove the jumper and it's disabled? It doesn't really say. I'm gonna guess if I remove it, it'll be okay. So CN1, serial one connect. Okay, that's the connector, sorry. All right, so we're looking at the jumpers here. There it is. Jumper two is COM one or COM three. We're gonna take jumper two. And we are going to just remove it like that. Now, unfortunately, some of these pins are a little bent. Oh boy. Okay, so pin one is here. This is A sub two. Pin one is here. And with a little bit of massaging. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're talking about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this guy in like that there we go ah nice fresh <laughs> ISA slots and this guy is gonna live right in front of the power supply but it will only block it minimally Very nice. Okay, we've got our ad lib. We've got our multi IO. Now, the other question, of course, is how the heck do we add? Oh, interesting. This actually says FDD, but it is not telling me what side pin one is. So I am going to guess. Generally speaking about the worst thing that happens is the floppy drive light stays on. Not a big deal. All right, so now what I was hoping to do with this build, and I don't think this is gonna work. It might. No, it's totally not gonna work. So my original plan with this, which is why I wanted to use this really super long cable, um, was to run a five and a quarter inch, or yeah, five and a quarter inch drive here, and then run a two and a half inch drive, so a three and a half inch drive here, um, but this cable is not long enough. Um, really doesn't seem to be huh. that might work although this would have to be drive a so i think assuming i don't need to flip this over which i'm sure i will because it's never the right orientation we can put this one down here and this might just reach to the floppy to the to the five and a quarter inch drive that's going to sit right there It's like water cooling, except with ribbons. All right, so let's free up some space back here. I think what we're gonna do is uh, we'll end up using this bay here where a hard drive might go, and uh, I'll put some zip ties here and whatever cables we don't need, we'll just tuck back in there. Like that. And this guy will like tuck back in here. Like that. Okay, but for now, uh, we're just going to do a 1.4 meg floppy drive. It's a little tight.
Hmm. Oh. Okay. That just clicks right in. Almost don't need a screw. But we are going to do a screw. Okay. All right. So the floppy connector is the power connector is way down in there. Oh, that was easy. Okay. And I want to say pin one is usually the direction. of the Molex connector. We'll try that. We're going to tuck all that in there. Okay, so we've got floppy, power, ribbon cable, ad-lib, multi-IO. All right, you should be seeing the screen. I'll leave it pointed down here for the moment. And floppy ribbon, or floppy light is on solid. And valid partition table, well, that's promising. All right, so something's backwards. So let's power this off. And let's flip this around. Over back on. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we're counting up our RAM. Floppy drive light is not on. Alright, we're booting from C. I don't know if it scans the floppy on boot. It'd be nice if it did, but I like that sound. Hmm. Okay, so... <laughs> I can hear that a lot today. Alright, selected boot menu. Concern because uh, we're here where it says Toshiba TN um, is a problem. When I plugged the power supply in, it sparked, and I'm worried that it did something bad. Um, it might have cooked my compact flash card, which was really, really annoying if that's the case. Yeah, it just doesn't want to boot now. All right, well, you know what happens now. We have to take these cards back out. All right, cards removed. Let's see what happens. Hmm. And now it boots. So there's something that this computer doesn't like. Could be the I.O. card. If it doesn't like the I.O. card, I have another one. I was kind of hoping to also have a game port, but um, uh, maybe it's just the I.O. card. So let's power it off. If it's the I.O. card, I'm not going to sweat it that much. If it's the Radlib, I'm going to be super bummed. We are booting. We 
Dark tridenting. Yes. Okay. So it's still going to boot. That's great. So let me try the other IO card. Okay. So for the time being, um, so I have the other IO card right here. Um, but I'm going to have to like try and track down the uh, jumper settings and stuff because I have no idea what this thing is set at and nothing's marked. Uh, it's a pretty standard looking IO card, nothing fancy about it. Got this at the uh, Vintage Computer Festival down in San Leandro. But for the time being, uh, we're just going to leave the ad lib in here for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, covers back on. We'll power this off, hook the floppy drive back up, and see if we can read the floppy drive. All right, we're booting up. Everybody says, oh, we're gonna boot. Oh, nice. My first time using this particular floppy drive. And uh, nice that it's got some nice sound to it. I wish there was a floppy drive seek it boot, but what are you gonna do? Nothing's gonna work because it's not plugged into anything, so that's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, okay. Oh no. Oh, I'm in help. <laughs> so good. Alright, escape. We want to exit. So, what is on this? What does this come with? What is included? Alright, we got some lemmings. Alright, there we go. We've got a runme.bat. We've got... Yay, lemmings. Last box, not bad. Yes. Uh, is there a readme? I see a Russell. Aha. Edit. Read. Check.
What makes this one not found? Insert the this game. <laughs> okay. Uh, remember DOS? Remember how awesome DOS was? Oh, I keep forgetting that. Okay. Adlib got that. So I'm trying to get that Adlib, that sweet, sweet Adlib to go. Ah, install. VGA. Which drive contains lemmings? C. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this will fit on a floppy. I guess I could just try and run it from there, but let's. I don't want this to like go on forever. I'm guessing this will come out of the PC speaker, if anything. <laughs> I am not good at Pac-Man. See if we can clear out this back corner with no super pellet. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, uh, they're circling in on me. No! Ha ha ha. No! Oh, I almost ate it there. Thankfully, ghosts don't hold a grudge. <gasps> Cherry. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, can I get it? Oh, I'm almost there. Hey, I did it. Oh, I have to play it again? That's <laughs> oh, not quite what I remember. All right, well, obviously, um, you know, a lot more needs to get done with this. Um, I think this is the original, sort of my original build here. Um, but uh, thankfully it's uh, all working just fine. The floppy drive works. Um, but uh, still got a lot more to go. I think this is gonna be uh, a lot of fun. And you know, people ask like, why on earth would you be this excited for such a slow computer? And I can say that, um, you know, this is, this is a pretty unique uh, time where you can actually get what is effectively a brand new Turbo XT made for the modern age and you know you, you don't you get like an old IBM XT or something like that and it's cool and it's old and it's got big giant cards and but I mean it's like 30 years old it's just you just never know what's gonna break on that thing you're gonna have to do a recap or something like this with with something like this it's you, you you can put it in a sleeper case and 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 uh, uh, you know have have a new XT. <laughs> I feel silly saying that because it's the name of the darn product, but uh, definitely hats off to um, hats off to JD and uh, hats off to uh, the designer of the open source hardware that is the new XT. Sergey Keselev, um, amazing work, uh, both of you, for designing this and bringing it to reality. I, I have, I can't wait to mess with this some more. Play some old games that I was playing way back in the day. Do some fun terminal stuff. Connect this thing to the internet. Yes, the internet that is happening. And uh, yeah, and also. For those of you that have watched all the way here to the end, you know I, I kind of consider this a part one. I don't know how many parts there's going to be to this. Uh, obviously, I want to try and get the Super I/O controller and everything working. But um, let me know, like, would you like? I was going for sort of a modern, uh, sort of a modernish looking build, you know, in a modern kind of black case like this one. Um, would you want this to be beige? Um, I would have to replace all the drives, but. 
Um, yeah, I'm just curious, what would you want? Would you want to see this the way it is? It's kind of a cool sleeper in a fairly compact case. Or should I paint this thing beige? <laughs> Including the front plastic and everything. Um, I would love to know your feedback. I may not do it even if a bunch of people say, yeah, you should paint it beige, but it would be a pretty interesting project. So um, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, look out for part two coming soon. I'm not exactly sure when, but I'm pretty excited to continue to dig into this. So um, but yeah, I'll, uh, we'll probably resume uh, next time. I'll clean this up just a little bit. I may or may not do that on camera, but uh, thanks again. And thanks for all the support. Um, it's been really fun doing this and uh, it's been great to watch uh, new subscribers and stuff like that I'm just doing this for fun. You know, I'm not out to make money or anything like that um, It's just uh, it's just for good times. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it, too uh, Thanks for watching the 90s tech and we will catch you on the flip side